We're out here uh, chasing around eel pout. Uh, we've been out on the lake now for about a month, kind of chasing them around and trying to pinpoint them uh, during their spawn. Uh, they're a fish that just gets a little attention. Um, that's why they fascinate me and, and so many others. Uh, so we find a, finally kind of found them, uh, congregated all together in uh, kind of a 50 yard stretch. And that's where we've been fishing for them, uh, pounding heavy jigs on the bottom. One thing we've proved is using this camera is uh, the deal, uh, not, not a Vexlar because these breaks are so steep. Uh, there's about a three or four foot dead spot where you're lifting your rod up. Uh, you can't even see the jig. Uh, and, and seeing them react uh, to the bait on camera is a lot cooler and it's a lot more effective way to catch the fish. You can see with the camera, another thing that I think is really critical is you can see if the fish have spawned or not. I mean, you can see the mass of their body with this camera. You can see uh, if they're skinny or fat. And actually, lately, I've, the more fish that we've caught have been post-spawn than pre-spawn. When you're looking for these fish, um, when they're spawning, uh, basically what we found best is right off of a weed line. Uh, in this case, it's just coontail and little clumps of, of gravel or rock uh, spread in, in throughout this, these flat sand areas. And again, a testament to how useful this camera is to be able to see everything that's going on. Down there, these fish are, some will come up to the bait and they'll completely turn their bodies and come down on the bait. Uh, some will just swim by six, seven feet off bottom. I mean, uh, they just they have really no care in the world. They're just, they just kind of, they're just a mysterious uh, creature. The footage that we've, me and my buddies have been able to obtain uh, in the last two days uh, should really, really shed some light on these fish, help people understand them more. So I've been fishing on this lake for years and playing around with this camera. The last couple of months, I found things that I didn't even know existed. Uh, these are transition lines, anything from pockets of rocks inside wheat, coontail beds, um, uh, shell beds transitioning from Aladea weeds in the shells, uh, where the, I mean, crazy, crazy transition lines. I think fishing with a camera is so, so critical uh, in this day and age. There's no reason why you shouldn't have it with the technology that uh, we have at our fingertips. They're not super hard to catch when they're spawning, and like when they're spawning, for example, you know, we're throwing back the bigger fish whether they're post-spawn or pre-spawn. I'm a, a harvester. When I fish, I, I keep fish, you know, sometimes. Um, so it's okay to keep a few, but, you know, if you're coming out here, make sure you take the bigger fish, throw them back, keep the uh, smaller, let's just say 20 to 25 inch fish. Those are the fish that, uh, you know, they're not the big reproducers. Um, those are the good fish to eat. So those are the ones you want to take when you come out here. As much fun as it is to catch yolk out, I love it. Uh, they pull hard. I've been distracted the last two days, uh, just kind of directing traffic, telling the boys, uh, hey, you got one coming in on your jig, slow it down. Uh, watching these fish react uh, is really, really sweet. You got one? Yep. Blonde. Oh, look at the colors in albino. <laughs> uh, so just something, something that's really cool about this fish too, uh, the coloration. So we're out here, we don't see a lot of fish like this, but this is basically what I would call an albino eel pout. Really, really light colored compared to this one. has got a little more color. Uh, you can see both of these fish are spawned out. They've done their deed and now uh, they're eating. And yeah, just a really cool comparison there side by side uh, of the different colors of fish you can, you can catch.